Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through how to create the perfect landing page for Google ads in 2023. Now, a lot of things have changed recently in Google ads. And one of the things that is necessary uh, nowadays is to create a landing page. If you don't have a landing page, you're really shooting yourself in the foot because your conversion rates are just going to be so much lower than if you were using them, you're just going to see a lot less results. And what I mean by this is a normal landing page will convert anywhere from 20 to 40%. So 20 out of 40 people out of 100 will convert into a lead or prospective buyer compared to a website, which normally converts at a little less than 1%, all the way up to 10%, 10% is really pushing it there. So you could literally quadruple your results. Say you take an average of a 5% uh, website conversion rate to a 25% uh, you know, landing page, that's five times results, five times the amount of leads, and it is definitely worth running landing pages nowadays. You're just going to see so much better results. But I often get asked the question, how do we actually construct these landing pages? What do they look like? What do we actually, what are our goals? What are the principles we follow? And there's a, there's a lot of them. So I'm gonna break down the most important ones that you need to look at in order to make sure you craft the perfect landing page. So let's begin with the first three principles that I follow when it comes to any advertising whatsoever. And that is identifying the problem, giving reasons to buy and having a clear call to action. Now we do this exactly the same with our actual headlines and descriptions when we're creating the actual Google ads. Uh, I have an entire video on how to craft the perfect Google ad headline. I'll link it up above. Fantastic video, but it walks you through exactly the same thing, which is we need to identify the problem. What is our customer looking for? And this could be simply just reiterating the exact same thing they typed in. So maybe they typed in pool installation, Chicago, pool installation, California. I don't know. Our headline could simply say looking for pool installation in California, or maybe pool installation, California or looking to create your dream backyard pool in California. Something like that, that just reiterates exactly what they typed in. And it tells them that this website knows exactly what they're looking for. They went, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, I am looking for pool installation. All right, tell me why I should you know, buy from you. What, why, why should I pick from you? Because clearly you know what I want, but you know, tell me what I want. And that leads us into our next step, which is reasons to buy. Normally right below our headline here, we're gonna have a few bullet points which give reasons to buy, which could be 24 seven service, could be lifetime guarantee, could be testimonials, like hundreds of testimonials, could be you know tons of five-star reviews, licensed and insured, award-winning. There's a ton of reasons, but give them reasons to buy. Don't boast about your business. Don't be like, we're the best. That, that's not great. That, that doesn't help them make a decision. What are the actual benefits to them? That's what you should be focusing on. And that will really help them make a decision on whether or not they want to go for you. Keep in mind, you don't want to list out 500 different benefits. You want to keep this simple, normally five to six bullet points on reasons to buy. That should be good. You don't want to overcomplicate the process. We want to keep the amount of cognitive load, AKA the actual processing of the brain here as little as possible, because if we stress out the brain, the person's gonna go, ah, this is just confusing. I'll do it another day and leave the site and now you've lost a lead. So keep this super simple. Then the final step here is after we've identified the problem, given them reasons to buy, what is the next step we want them to take? What do we want them to do on their end? And that is normally to either fill out a form or call us. So you could have two buttons, one that says get a quote now, and when they click it, it pops up like a little form that they can fill out and submit to your business, or two, just have a call us now button. And those two work absolutely fantastic. You don't wanna overcomplicate this. What a lot of businesses do, they'll have three different emergencies numbers. And I know what you're saying, you three different emergencies numbers. Absolutely, I've seen this time and time again, a lot with HVAC businesses, by the way, uh, but I digress. They'll have multiple email addresses. They'll have a contact us form. They'll have a, another phone number that's just for like a normal phone number. And then they'll have an AI chat bot. And then the person on the other end of the screen goes, oh my God, which one do I pick? And then leaves because it's too complicated. We want this entire process to be seamless and simple. It's easy. They don't want to think about this. There's a great book by Stephen Krug or Krug. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Dude's a genius. Uh, but his entire book is called Don't Make Me Think. And that is the entire idea behind this. You don't want the other person to think. You wanna make it as easy and seamless as possible to them. You wanna give them all the relevant information so they can make a decision on whether or not to contact you. And that's it. You don't wanna send them to social media links or the about us page or you know, like the privacy policy. No one cares about any of this stuff. You should have a privacy policy at the bottom of the page but don't have it in the headline is what I, is my point here. <laughs> so don't do any of that. Keep this super simple. Now, once we have our hero section, and by the way, if you didn't know what a hero section was, it's the very top part of the page. The vast majority of people will never go below here. So it's important that we get all the information relevant to the customer right here. 
because the vast majority of people are never going to scroll below this. And that is a big missed opportunity that a lot of people do. Please, please, please make sure your hero section, as soon as the person clicks on your page, where it loads in, that part of your page is optimized. This is the most important part. The vast majority of people will not scroll below here and you will not have a second opportunity to convert them into a customer. Now, moving on, what else do we focus on? And I've come up with four different things that we really need to focus on. The first one is social proof. I love social proof, I love testimonials, but what is very important here is that they look real, they look genuine. When you see them, you actually go, yeah, that's probably an actually person. Clearly they were actually happy with the results they got. When you see a website that they've actually just manually typed it in, their web developer has typed it in, maybe they just put a random picture on it, that doesn't look real. And most people understand that very quickly. They go, eh, that doesn't look that uh, genuine. So what I love to do for our landing pages is actually go on to either Facebook, Google reviews, Yelp, whatever third party review site it is, and literally just copy and paste these testimonials into the landing page, make sure they look you know, presentable and readable. And then once you actually do this, it looks so much more real and authentic. Yeah, I know a lot of people say, well, it doesn't look as good. It's not perfectly formatted. It's like, yeah, all of that is offset and it's worth doing this because it looks real and the person on the other end of the screen goes, yeah, this is an actual real person. And when you look at the best landing pages, they all use real social proof. It's not typed in. It's actual pictures of people commenting on, hey, this product was awesome or this product wasn't good. <laughs> Normally you don't wanna add that to your landing page but it's genuine and that's the point. It, this makes a massive difference and should be used on your landing page for the best results. The next thing that is often overlooked, and this is very, very simple, is making sure your page loads quickly. A lot of pages take more than three seconds to load. After three seconds, you're going to see a dramatic decrease in conversions and people actually seeing on their website because people are impatient they don't want to actually stick around and go through all this stuff. They are busy. They want to get to the point as quickly as possible. Give me what I need to know so I can make a decision. That's all they want. They don't want to stick around. And one of the vital components here is making sure your page loads quickly. Now, a great way to identify your actual page speed is using the page speed insights tool from Google. It's completely free. All you have to do is actually put your URL into this and it will tell you exactly what is good about your website or landing page and what is bad about it and where you can actually improve to make sure the site loads quickly. And again, please don't overlook this. A lot of people do. Uh, if your page loads slowly, Google is going to dock you marks, especially in quality score, because it's going to say your landing page experience is terrible because your page takes forever to load. And we're going to dock you on quality score. And that's going to cost you more money because you have a low quality score. So please make sure page loads quickly. The next thing we're going to be looking at super simple. Again, make sure your page is responsive. And what I mean by this is when you go onto your landing page and you pull it up on your phone, do you actually have to pinch and like scroll in and look around and go, uh, this is actually a real pain to actually maneuver this landing page. That is what I mean by responsive. This landing page needs to be designed for mobile, tablet, and desktop. And if it's not, you're going to have a very poor landing page experience for a certain type of customer. Maybe it's not mobile optimized and maybe all of your you know, people on your mobile phone hate you because they actually have to pinch it and look around. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, it's fine. No, this does matter because if people see this in this day and age, they're just going to leave your website. They're not going to spend their time. They'll find another website that is mobile responsive. So please make sure your landing page is mobile responsive. It works on mobile, desktop and tablets. This is super important and can't be overlooked in 2023. Now, the final thing that I really wanted to talk about was easy to read and simple. I kind of discussed simple at the beginning of this video, but simplicity and being able to easily read the landing page is vital. If this person has to actually concentrate and figure out like, oh my God, what does this exactly say? It's hard to read. It's yellow one purple or just some crazy, you know, vibrant colors that it's hard on the eyes. Keep in mind, some people might be reading this late at night. You don't want to just get blasted in the face by like neon yellow. That's not easy on the eyes. We normally want, you know, black and white, easy colors, maybe a blue, something like that. Keep nice and calm. That's what we want. Easy to read, you know, large font. Don't use, you know, size six font. That is not good. People can't read that. We want easy to read, calm, make a decision. Don't feel like you're making this person in a rush uh, with a whole bunch of blinking stuff on it. That's bad. Keep it simple, keep it easy to read and your conversion rates will skyrocket. Now I do want to show you two great examples of a good landing page versus a bad landing page. And this is actually lingscars.com and it's not technically a landing page, so forgive me on that. Uh, but I think it makes the point very clearly. You don't want to overcomplicate stuff. 
this landing page is absolutely crazy. As Ling himself says at the bottom, the craziest car leasing website. Uh, this may be like some sort of gig website. I don't know, as I've never bought a car from here. But it makes all my points very clear. If we have too much stuff going on in the website, it confuses the person and goes, I, I don't know, I'm going to leave, I'm going to go find a different car website. That is exactly what we want to avoid. And by doing all the things like I talked about, making sure that we clearly identify the problem. Maybe it's looking for a car or looking to lease a car and then giving reasons to buy. We have, you know, 0% financing. We have, you know, two year leases. We have lifetime guarantee. I don't know what it is or a long time warranty. I don't know. I'm not really a car guy. That being said, you get my point. Make it simple. Have a clear call to action. They kind of do have a clear call to action on here with the order and quote button, but um, they also have a lot of other stuff going on. So we really need to reduce all this stuff to make it convert better and get more leads for our business. Now, a great landing page that I absolutely love is from a company called Calm. They're a meditation app and highly recommended. I, I enjoy meditating. I think it's very valuable for most people, uh, but this is absolutely an amazing landing page. It's super simple, super calming. As you can see, Meet Calm, the number one app for sleep and meditation. I may switch that up a little bit and A-B test it and try and put, you know, looking to meditate, looking to, you know, sleep better, something like that. Maybe it resonates more with certain people over other people. I think this was just a general landing page though, so I don't want to critique them too much on that. And then it says, join millions around the globe who experience better sleep, lower stress, and less anxiety. It's giving you reasons to buy better sleep, lower stress, less anxiety, and millions of people have done that. So that's the social proof there, as you can already see, and a simple call to action, get started now. And it's got their app here and a nice calming background, as you can see, nice, calm, not difficult to read. If you're reviewing this at night, it's not gonna hurt your eyes easy to the point and it's going to have a fantastic conversion rate if you were ever to use this with google ads and this is really what we want to aim for identify the problem give reasons to buy and end with a clear call to action don't overcomplicate this make sure you provide every all the relevant information they need to know so maybe it's the process about your business further down below but you don't want to overwhelm anyone off right off the bat so if you follow all these steps you should have an amazing landing page that converts very well and gets you a ton more leads compared to your website. Now, if you are looking to figure out what landing page software to use, or maybe you just want to use it on your WordPress website or your own, you know, CMS, whatever it is, I, it's up to you. I've created a video that I reviewed my favorite landing page software. Uh, some of them are really cheap and I would highly recommend checking out that video. If you do want to use a landing page software, uh, it's pretty informative and I really like the video. Now I do have one big favor to ask at the end of this video and that is to leave a like. I put a ton of time and effort into these videos. So if you could hit that like button, I really would appreciate it and just allows other people to actually see how to properly run Google ads. There's a lot of people who don't know what to do in Google ads. And I think these videos are really helping. Uh, so a like would be very appreciated. Thank you in advance. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, leave a comment down below. I will do my best to get back to it. There has been so many comments, so many emails, so many messages. Uh, it's taken me a couple of days to get back to them. So if it takes me a day or two to get back, that's why. On that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care. I wish you all well.